sounds super lame. She could not possibly have a lower opinion of me. So <laughs> she's like, your songs are the nerdiest thing that I've ever heard in my life. So, and she's right, probably. I mean, I don't really know what she does in her in her free time when I'm not around, but I imagine that the songs are probably in the top five at least. We go. Look at us getting started. <laughs> I was about, right, I was what's about your to timer at? Wait, what's your timer at? What's your timer at? 15. 14, oh my god. It's perfect. 15. It's perfect right now. We'll see if we can keep it oh, going. Oh, not bounce up to 35. Now I'm that far ahead of you. You're messing with me. All right. Jonna. Jonna's a good band. Nobody likes Jonna. She's kind of a jerk. She has uh, way too much CC. It's not even really fair. Um, you, I've... I'm sorry. It's very interesting to see the blue team ban out Jonna despite the fact they have first pick and they picked Jonna last game and she did so much work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they probably are. Uh, I would imagine that if they're banning out Jana, they probably have something in mind that requires them to not be knocked out of the something, something with a with a suppress or, or maybe they just wanted to switch it up and somebody at the bottom wanted to pick Jana and they're trolling each other. Who knows? Honestly, I don't know. But they're banning out the same champions that they played in the last game. Purple <laughs> team banned out Riven. They banned out their own Warwick. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Graves ban right here. I'm taking bets right now. Five bucks on a Graves ban. Great. I'm not betting, but I I would bet <laughs> that uh, well Graves Graves didn't actually do a whole lot the last game, so. Nah, but still maybe they're, a, they're trolling each other. You know, they can see a, a Graves ban coming up, but he could do a lot if, in the hands of a proper person. Proper person <laughs> being not Ponophobia. Oh, I would have lost five dollars. Good thing you didn't take my bet. There you go. Yeah. They, well, Ponophobia had the lag issues, so I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he was probably lagging. At least the time that he walked into the other team unguarded <laughs> by himself. And maybe a couple more times when you have lag issues, you generally have them the whole game. So, All right, we got the Morgana ban. Uh, we didn't get the Kale ban this time. Kale is on the board. We could see a very powerful Kale choice in the future. Ooh, I would like to see a Kale pick myself. I think the character is pretty much overpowered, although no one seems to believe me. Probably because I think the same thing of Karma and Evelyn. And you've already voiced your opinions on Karma for me. Uh, Karma's amazing and probably the best champ in the game, only to be surpassed by Eve, who is better. So that is my opinion on that. I see, this is why we work so good as a casting duo, because we just agree on so many things. Yeah, definitely. Yep. I have, well, I don't really have formed my own opinions. I just kind of agree with whoever I'm talking to. That's one of the things that I do. So, Which is why all of my songs, if you've ever heard them, uh, will say that whatever champ that I'm rapping about is the best one. Well, flattery gets you everywhere in the land of casting, but... Um, it certainly you, makes everyone happy who listens, because this, everybody's champ is the best one. This is true. This is very, very true. But uh, for those that don't remember, I mentioned in the earlier game that Ezo Office Romeo is actually known as Raphael Raven, who has been playing in Battle Arena for uh, quite some time now. And very, very interesting to see that even though he's told the other team what his other name used to be, they've let him pick Blitzcrank. Now, Bad Administrator, you don't know this, but I've never seen Office Romeo miss a Blitzcrank arm, ever. Really? Yeah, he's got well, deadly aim. I will bet that you will see this one won this game because Lee Sin is the most elusive champion in the league, I would say. We got the Kale pick. That is amazing. Ponophobia. <laughs> he's listening, isn't he? He's like, Bad Ministry said pick Kale. I'm doing it. I don't <laughs> care. Kale might get a song now. It's, it's going to be about the failure that is this game, most likely. <laughs> but they did win last game, so he's got one in the bag. He can he can stand to lose one and still win the best out of three. This so the Kale pick strong. This is entirely sure. true. Uh, but Kale and Lulu looks like it might be on the bottom lane composition. So uh, that'd be very interesting. You know, it's a the newer kind of support character, and Lulu, of course, you know that Lulu is very very strong in a bottom lane composition. Kale, we saw Cop play Kale, and I don't know how well Cop did, but I'm assuming since he's Cop, it was pretty good. But they did not win that game in the IPL tournament. But still, Kale and Alulu could do work against a normal kind of composition, but you have the choice of having a Blitzcrank or a Nunu in that bottom lane with a Vayne right now. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of CC that Kale and Lulu do not have. That is true. Blitzcrank could either jungle or go bottom... Nunu could do the same. Nunu can actually solo lane also, which doesn't happen very often. Um, honestly, it's probably hard for the blue team to choose if they are trying to counterpick because right now it's pretty difficult to tell who's going where on the purple team. Um, 
Blitzcrank's not the fastest jungler in the world, but he does have some of the best ganks possible if he can land the hook. So, I'm gonna say, and, and Office Romeo does not miss a grab, so we could see a very powerful jungle Blitzcrank coming out here. Don't think there's going to be a solo top Blitzcrank. Zero Cardinality is Karthus, so we're probably not going to see a solo middle Blitzcrank. And there's a new new pick too, so... Jungle Blitzkrank could be strong, but now Stoter might pick Jungle Mundo. So could we see a solo top Nunu and a support Blitzkrank? Um, I would say that given that Blitz has the teleport, that it's probably Blitzkrank top. Mm, this is true. See, this is why mm -hmm. you should be a caster. Because, I yeah. Well, <laughs> Office Romeo with 100% lifetime hook accuracy also can probably beat Lee Sin in lane. But if I had to go based on people with human abilities... I would say that Blitzcrank is going to have a very bad time. He's going to pizza when he should have french fried or whatever the hell that is and <laughs> completely <laughs> lose never, the lane. I've never heard that before. What? Oh, that's a South Park thing. It's how when you ski, when oh, you right. want to slow down, you pizza, right? But when you want to go fast, you french fry. So if you mess them up, you, you have a bad time. Not so anyways... Continuing on, please, uh, please Vayne plus Nuno is really strong, uh, especially late game, but even early game. Um, the, with the blood boil and comboed with it's just like any other ad with nunu really so except for that vein um if if nunu slows you near a wall you really have to get out because vein has a lot of uh ability to get around you with with the tumble and then hit you into the wall which, at which point they're going to do a ridiculous amount of damage and if nunu happens to be standing right next to you right then after level six he can then pop the all and he has like three seconds before you can walk out of it there's no way you can make it out so um they also have I would say the ganks aren't very good though. Uh, Mundo, it's really hard to land cleavers through minions and everything that's going on. Um, and Mundo doesn't have any kind of hard CC, he just has the cleavers, and the cleavers are just rough. Um, people, the only thing you can really do with Mundo is when you come from, you can try to come from behind. And when you throw cleavers, you throw them in the path of the people. And if they dodge them, they have to dodge the other way, which means that they're walking towards the ganks. So, um, so you, it's kind of like a zoning thing with Mundo. Um, and then usually you would dodge the cleaver and then have to flash away. So as soon as flash is down, Vayne and Blitzcrank are going to have a problem. Um, Lulu, I honestly, Lulu has heal. And so are we are we thinking Lulu Kale? We are, right? I'm, I'm thinking it's Lulu Kale. I don't think has it would be, be Lulu Lee Sin. I mean, no, it has to be, yeah. No, but she's, oh. oh, I think what she's doing is she's picking up both heal and exhaust to make up for the fact that Kale is popping flash and ignite to try to secure kills in this right. case. They're both actually going to have a movement speed buff. Kale's going to be able to get a heal and a movement speed buff on that W. Lulu's going to be increasing Kale's ability power, which will then make her E deal more damage and right. give her a movement speed boost. So with an exhaust and a heal on the support and then Kale with ignite and flash to secure those kills... That could shape up to be a deadly lane if, you know, they don't get pulled. Yeah, well, the thing about it is is that Vayne is going to be the person that they're going to want to target. So the Ignite's gonna, not going to do a whole lot because of the cleanse. Um, the cleanse will, will clear the Ignite uh, over time damage. The Blitzcrank, though, only has teleport. I still well Blitzcrank's Blitz Crank's top though. I guess Ignite I guess Ignite doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me on Nunu. I I still don't really know who's top because um, support Nunu with Ignite is very strange, and uh, Blitzcrank with Teleport Bottom would also be very strange. Both of those choices seem very strange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Blitzcrank has picked up the exhaust. It makes me kind of think he's going to go bottom, but like, Teleport Without on flash, Blitzcrank? Yeah. I, I don't know. Normally, you need a flash on Blitzcrank. You you don't need a Teleporter. I'm so confused right now that I'm going to stop. Odd. I'm going to stop trying to theorycraft and just like revel in the fact that Rainer has picked Victor to go middle. Well, Victor is not bad um, against Karthus. Karthus has a slight delay every time he wants to throw out one of his Skittles, which means that he will get hit by the laser more often than not if he's trying to farm, even from a distance, because the laser goes really far. Uh, Victor also has some of the highest bursts in the game, and Karthus has some of the least survivability in the game. Um, you know, that's by design, obviously, because he's sort of meant to die. Unfortunately, being meant to die in the laning phase is not really a good thing. So Victor, if played well... Can can probably steamroll Karthus in lane. Unfortunately for Karthus, yeah, um, a little unfortunate for that Karthus. But I did actually get a chance to see at Pax East this weekend. They had a needlessly large pay save card tournament going down, and uh, there was a a game between some sort of pancake game, a pancake themed team, and then 
team I'm on a boat, which features Igata, formerly of Choppa in the car. His team actually wound up winning on the back of a very powerful solo mid victor going up against a Morgana who just couldn't do anything against his shield and his laser. Yeah, Victor's uh, probably one of the most underrated champions in League of Legends. The, and the reason people don't play him is the same reason people don't play a lot of champions like Lux. And uh, it, it, you just got to hit the skill shots, and it's just hard. And his his uh, his third ability, which isn't a skill shot, it, it requires you to be really close to the person. And you don't usually build very tanky. Victor is naturally a little bit tanky, but um, you just don't generally want to get that close in a team fight as the AP carry. So it's he's a little bit counterintuitive on how you have to play him. Um, your stun is an area of effect, and they did fix it. They buffed it a little bit so that it's immediate. Uh, immediate, immediately starts slowing you where it used to have a slight delay. But the problem with it um, is that people try to use it for the stun. And it's more, I would say it's more like uh, use to zone. So you want to you want to use it to try to move people to an area um, so that you can hit as many people as you can with your laser. Yes, indeed, because that laser is going to be doing a lot, a lot of burst damage. If he upgrades his little hex core thing, he is going to be able to deal damage over time with that laser and just winds up being... Like, what he said, one of the highest DPS kind of burst damage spells that you can get in this game. But uh, then again, I like playing Victor as a support character, so I know nothing about Victor going into the middle lane. Fair enough. Well, Victor's ult is pretty amazing. Um, that's basically all I need to know. <laughs> yeah, it hits it's, like a truck. It's like two trucks hitting each other and you're standing between them, I would say. <laughs> that's a lot of damage. That's, like, right, that's well, like a hospital bill. Tell me where your timer's at. My timer is currently at 42 seconds. All right, we are synced up and ready to go. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. kind of, what I'm seeing right now is kind of odd. We have Blitzcrank on the purple team, but not invading. Um, invading is pretty much what Blitz, Blitzcrank does. And with Mundo, uh, they could they could go for an invade because Cleaver does percentage health and it slows. They have they could have Nunu Ice Ball. It's not a bad invading team. They have uh, Vayne Stun into the wall. Um, it looks like everybody's just kind of content to guard their jungle, though. So yeah. that's that's not exciting at all. No, not at all. I am personally <laughs> one that like early game aggression. I like level two ganks. I like jungle invades, and this is kind of boring for me. But we do see that uh, everybody on the blue side is kind of grouped up on the same side. They might go for some sort of delayed jungle invade. I mean, although Udyr's positioning over by his wolves makes you kind of think they're going to stay it, play it safe and be boring in this game and not be exciting at all. Same thing for the purple team as Soter and Moon Vixen, the 40-year-old pretending to be a, a very seductive 18-year-old League of Legends female player. But ooh, there you go. there's actually a bad leash going on the opposite side as Zero Cardinality actually hit the wolves before uh, anybody else did. So it looks like he's going to be taking a lot, a lot of damage, but they are just going to be leashing wolves for Vayne and Blitzcrank to pick up a kill on. So early experience, early gold going to that bottom lane despite, you know, uh, and a start over here by Mundo at red. Nunu is going to help him leash that out. And finally, the debate is going to be settled. We have a Nunu top and a Blitzcrank bottom. Um, okay, well, that that's uh, that makes teleport a little weird. But um, maybe, wow, Blitzcrank just took a lot of damage. It looks like he, what he's planning to do is use the teleport to get back in the lane after buying extra pots or something. Um, it's a it's a strategy. <laughs> Karthus took a lot of damage. I already had to use a pot. As you can see, everybody's build is the standard buying way too many pots builds. Nobody builds Dorns anymore. Nobody builds anything but boots and pots, <laughs> except for support who builds mana trinket wards and pots. So that is what you see in every lane from every person. But it's very interesting to see that Blitzcrank got that teleport specifically to get the middle lane an early blue buff because Mundo doesn't need it. So we're going to have to see if Karthus can abuse the fact there's this blue buff here and not give it to Victor like it looks like he's going to be doing at this point in time. Uh, that could be a very effective strategy. Mundo's going to be coming in here for level 2 gank it looks like, so take it away. Yeah, we have Mundo coming in. We got a flash out. Um, that was good to wait for the exhaust to flash. Uh, if you flash too early, you won't get the exhaust, and then you're, you're more easy to gank later on. So you definitely want to wait for the one summoner unless you're actually going to die without getting hit with the exhaust. So that was pretty good. And as you can see, Victor is, uh, he's not in bad shape. He's a little low on mana already, though, which is pretty bad. Um, Mundo is stealing the jungle, which is what you want to do. Um, Udyr's going to be coming around there and see that his race are gone. He'll be a little bit sad about that. But since Mundo didn't get blue, uh, the, the disparity in, in levels isn't that big. Um, unfortunately, Udyr also, while Mundo was standing in top river, he was standing in top river, not ganking. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to gank. Nunu, because of the slow and the blood boil, he's pretty fast, and he can get back to his tower really quick. 
Yeah, and you don't normally see it solo top Nunu, so I wouldn't be surprised if Udi were kind of like, well, how do I gank this guy? I'm just going to stand here and wait for him to overextend. Oh, there's Dr. Mundo, so... Mundo is going to be continuing to clear his little camps and wait for them to respawn and everything. The, he does have no blue buff that did go to the cart this early on, and he has not given it away to Victor yet, but he is doing a decent job of harassing down, but still ran hurt on Victor. Look at the harass and the damage coming out onto Karthus. Like you said, Karthus, not a very strong survivability kit, more of just like, you know, kind of wanting to die and deal as much damage as possible. And then Victor, who kind of literally built like a glass cannon, he even looks like one right there. But, uh, dealing a lot, a lot of damage. On the bottom lane, I'm still interested to see how this Kale pick is working out for Ponophobia is. He's continuing to farm up by using his E, making him more of a ranged kind of champion, but uh, Blitzcrank hiding in the bush right there. You might want to be careful because as soon as some of these creeds move out of the way, you could see a little bit of a Blitzcrank pull. Vayne with a condemn against the wall. That could be a dead Ponophobia. And, ooh, that's the wow. first pull I've ever seen him miss! It's over. The, oh. the streak is gone. Wow. Um, that pull luck. wasn't honestly that hard, but he probably expected Ponophobia to, to not be dodging at that time, um, or at least to dodge up. The thing about Kale is that his Trist, uh, Kale has Tristana disease. Oh, we gotta fight top lane. Uh, I think he's okay, honestly. It looks like know. oh, it looks like Mundo's coming in. We gotta flash away. And since no minions are coming, it's gonna be hard for him to get away if he can dodge. Nope, he didn't dodge the cleaver, and that's gonna be a kill. <laughs> I don't know about this one. You make it very hard, but yeah, Moonbeam <laughs> will come in and pick up the first blood on there. But uh, as you were saying, what was going on with Kale on the bottom lane with Tristana Syndrome? K Kale has Tristana Syndrome. Kale, to use her ranged ability, has to push because she has the splash damage on all the other minions. So, um, as you can imagine, it's not a very good idea to be just outside of tower range against Blitzcrank. You can't really do anything safely. Um, if the Blitzcrank lands hooks, and obviously 100% minus one lifetime isn't that bad of a ratio. So this Blitzcrank could probably hit a hook or two. Um, yep, and there's one. We have Lulu getting knocked up. We're going to see a little bit of damage from Vayne. That's good harass, but um, Blitzcrank actually took just as much damage. So uh, since he's in front, that's probably not the best thing in the world. Um, you're probably going to see Lulu kind of hang back. It looks like the ward actually went away for for uh, red team bottom, which means that they're not going to have vision. Oh, he put another ward down. Blitzcrank probably really wants to hook out of that bush into the tower, but thing is, too, Vayne could wind up getting a tumble and condemn combo against that. Oh, well, there's another hook miss, so now the myth is really over. Exhaust goes down, too, onto Baidoku, so, oh, and then a Polymorph going down, too, actually, it's Whimsy. I'm calling it Polymorph because, you know, I'm pretending she's a sorceress. Ultimate coming out from Karthus, though. It looks like there was a kill being picked up on Ranhurt in the middle. Didn't even pay yep. attention to that one. As Karthus didn't even die, getting extremely, extremely low, though, so Ranhurt probably not too happy at that, that one. I could probably just hear him right now on Skype being like, God damn it, and then slam <laughs> something, and probably expensive and probably breakable so uh, a little bit of a tough luck for Ranhurt there as he winds up falling as he was doing a really good job against Karthus in that lane even look at the CS it is 32 uh, 32 to 33 that's the Karthus you know doing a decent job of keeping himself farmed up Perp team has an advantage and looks like Mondo's coming in bottom for another gank uh, if Blitzcrank lands a hook here it's gonna be really hard to get away oh Vayne, get, Vayne gets a knock into the wall uh, Lulu's probably dead honestly uh, yep we're gonna see Lulu go down Looks like flash away for Kale, and Blitzcrank can't hook far enough, so that was a pretty good exchange. Uh, usually when your mid dies to the jungler, you don't want to be extended anymore. Um, it's pretty much a, a general rule, because what happens is the enemy jungler is is can walk into your jungle, and there's no counterplay because there's nobody from mid to pinch. So even if you see him coming, you're not going to be able to kill him. He's basically has free reign of your jungle for the, for the duration that the mid is down. So they probably should have backed off there. Um, they did feel the pain from that. They're down about 1k, which is not a big deal. They didn't get dragon or anything crazy. It looks like we have another gank try on Kale. Karthus turned around prematurely. If he got the wall, he got the wall. And it looks like Kale's just going to walk away. Yeah, just um, not, too, not enough follow-up from either Blitzcrank or Karthus. No committing to that little bit of a engagement on Kale. So unfortunately, Kale well, was able to walk into their AOK. -okay. We saw Nunu up top getting very, very low before against uh, Lee Sin, but then forcing Lee Sin to go back. So uh, very interesting lane up there. We can see in the middle, the Ranhurt once again meeting a wall. He has a blue buff. He doesn't want to give that one to Karthus. Karthus has his own blue buff, though. So kind of the shoes on the other foot now. We're talking about Karthus not wanting to give the blue buff to 
to Victor, but who looks like he's getting pinter from all sides. Office Romeo is coming in here. Ooh, but the ultimate goes down on the Blitzcrank, missing the laser and the silencing from the first robot arm, but not enough for the second one. He will pick up a kill on Blitzcrank, but that's not going to be good enough. Miss Carthus refreshing the blue buff on the kill from Ranhurt. Three people in the middle wind up picking up a kill, but they also give the first kill to the blue team for the game. Yeah, well, it wasn't that bad because if, if you notice, Udyr actually went up and stole red buff during that uh, exchange. So the only the only problem is basically they traded some assists and assists are good because obviously they have extra gold over a solo kill. So Ranher probably could have got away there. He actually traded that on purpose. He's probably trying to get a little fed because he feels like once he has a little bit more damage, he can just explode Karthus into pieces whenever he wants, which is accurate. There are champs that you want to trade on more than other champs. Wow, Uder going in at a very bad time. He has to burn his flash. Uh, he he didn't see Mundo coming in from the top. Um, that's unfortunate, but Udo doesn't really need Flash for the most part. We got the Karth Assault. That was probably ill-advised because Udo, obviously, uh, with, with Turtle Form, yeah. is not going to die from 300 health. Well, wow, now not, he's going to die. <laughs> yeah, as I said, they're not giving it up, though. They see Udo over by the rates, and uh, they're just going to run in, and Mundo's going to pick up the kill on Udo. So uh, a little bit more feed to that uh, Mundo jungle. So Sotar's doing a really good job. Ooh. Blitzcrank bottom going in for the fight. Oh, we got the exhaust knocking into the wall. It's going to be really difficult for Kale to get away because she burned her ult. The, the less, yep, her ult's burned. She's got one more shot, one more shot, one more shot. Vayne is going deep. Main is going to live slightly. Uh, oh, she went back into the tower and took another tower shot. That's a pretty bad idea. And Lulu might pick this up. No, oh, she should have auto, auto, auto. She stopped um, auto attacking, and Vayne ran into a wall on top of everything else. So, uh, yeah. a fail yeah. acrobatics display from Baidoku, but still it paid off for him. <laughs> Tactically, that wasn't the best exchange for Vayne. Um, since the minions were already pushing, she could have just stayed on the other side of the tower, had Blitzcrank pushed the wave in, and then finished off Lulu without having to take a ton of damage. But since she's going back and she didn't die, she's it's exactly the same thing, so it doesn't matter. We missed another kill top because we sucked. We, we, uh, we had we Mondo coming in for the gank, and of course Lee Sin uh, doing what we said he would do and destroying Nunu in lane um, because <laughs> Lee Sin is an actual solo laner and Nunu is a uh, phony. He's just Nunu's a straight a up robot. phony. Nunu's a robot. He doesn't. He doesn't do. Yeah, well, he's not. <laughs> he's not Nunu about this game, but he doesn't do the things that a solo laner needs to do. All he can really do is uh, level up Ice Ball and try to get last hits. Um, and unfortunately, as it gets closer and closer to late game, he actually gets less effective. We have Uder coming on a mid. Um, Karthus has a ward, so that's not going to be very effective. Main is alone, and there's a large wave from blue team. It looks like Lulu is still kind of scared, though. She's wards Dragon instead. Um, and Kale is just pushing, not really going for any sort of harass. We have looks like what well, looks like going to be a pretty big exchange mid with both junglers looking to gank at the same time. You would think that Karthus and Mundo are going to win this, but uh, Mundo's actually backing off, and Karthus is still in lane. If Udyr flash stun... Oh, looks like Karthus is back, and they don't have vision of him because no, no minions are there. Udyr's so. flash is actually still down from the previous engagement, though we had to flash over that Karthus wall. Rainer, a That's little right. mispositioned on the W from Victor. Could have gotten a little bit more to the left, and now Mundo coming back in. Doing what Mundo does, he's there, he's not, and he's dangerous no matter what. If Udyr goes in here, he's just going to get burned down, so he's probably just going to run away. Yep. Yeah, Rainer actually Rainer. walked back into a cleaver to try to pop that ultimate down and uh, was not as effective as he wanted it to be. Uh, zero Cardinality, if they had one or two hits down, probably would have been able to pop an ultimate on him anyway, so I don't know if Reinhardt was really faced with a better decision in that circumstance, but... We have a gank bottom, Blitzcrank running in, he's just going to land the... He's, what he's going to do is try to land the E before he queues so that he gets an automatic hit. Mundo with no faith in Blitzcrank t actually turns around, and Kale with no faith in Lulu actually uses an ult unnecessarily, so that was... <laughs> A pretty b uh, bad exchange for both teams, but uh, it looks like we're going to have a 3v3. Um, per blue team actually has the advantage coming out of the bush. They can't be shot until they come out, so Vayne doesn't have any early damage, whereas they're obviously doing damage first. Um, it looks like everybody's just going to kind of back off, although Mundo is getting pretty ballsy for the help that he has. Um, and Udyr is going to attempt to take him down with red buff, but everybody else on the blue team is a little bit scared to go in. And here we see Vayne getting focused. We see, wow, everybody's just kind of melting down. Mundo's pretty low. Kale looks like she's going to die without grabbing the kill. And Karthus is going to clean up Kale. Doesn't have alt because of the earlier gank. And now we see that red team is just kind of snowballing the lead here. Yeah, and that, well, actually, Soter, on that Mundo, 
was able to stick around because his ultimate had like a two second cooldown left on it. We saw him pop it as soon as it was up. That forced it to ignite from Kale down onto Mundo. And that just let the rest of the team down there. That Blitzcrank and that Vayne can just run around and do whatever they wanted onto Udyr, onto Kale, onto Lulu. And there is no ignite to really get that extra burst of damage on. Plus, a Mundo with ignite on him being super, super low on HP. He is super tanky, but normally you think like, ah, oh, he can't heal back up. He's going to be right. fine. We can just burst him down really easily. Nope, not in that case. So it's here's 3, 0, and 5 with 73 farm out of the jungle. He has Mercury Treads and a lot of armor and health from that ha uh, Heart of Gold combo. But yeah, we saw in the middle here, uh, Office Romeo missing Blitzcrank pulls left and right for the first time in forever. Just wanted to prove me a liar. I think he's doing it on purpose <laughs> now. But uh, <laughs> we see that right well, here. Is, oh, go on. He's actually doing pretty good. I would say he's got six assists. Uh, while he doesn't have 100% accuracy, I think that your description of his Blitzcrank ability is pretty solid. Um, we have Lee Sin top lane trading with Nunu under tower. Of course, Nunu with consume is not going to die slowly. He will have to die quickly to die. So um, we are seeing Udyr come in for a gank. It looks like Mundo's also coming up. They do have vision on Udyr because he walked through a ward. It looks like they might try to counter gank. Unfortunately, Nunu does not have any damage items. He literally only has Merc Treads, Heart of Gold. They're actually going to fight him in the tower. This is probably not the best idea. Um, Looks like we have a yeah, Blitzcrank with the teleport. That's the clutch teleport <laughs> Blitzcrank that we all know and love that we see in every tournament. Wow, Lee Sin getting away. That's that's pretty bad for Red Team. They should have had a kill there. I don't know what Lee Sin's doing. He's, he's Blitzcrank's gonna try to get a grab around Udir. That was a good stun. The whole team is there, so if he can get a punch and a grab on Udir, they still might kill him. Um Lee Sin should not be staying there. He's just gonna get murdered. Yeah, which he did. He did manage to get the kill though on Mundo, so that was pretty good. Yeah, making the best of a bad situation, I think. Even though, you know, it was the better situation would have been him just getting out of there and then not really trading anything. But because Mundo did fall and there's only two there against that Udir, they're not able to push down on this tower. So instead of being a 3v1 and losing a tower, it was a 2v1 and they lost a kill. But uh oh, now Ranher a little out of position here, trying to get damage on this tower. He this is the grab though, so Un, un uh office romeo e as possible. <laughs> Ranhurt looks like he's be walking down into a ward, gets the wall off, there's an ice ball. Look at the damage on the ice ball against Ranhurt though. Ultimate from him is gonna be doing a lot of damage, but that's only gonna delay the Nunu ultimate from slowing him down and Nunu ultimate goes off. He has a blasting wand now, 70 AP. That is about 345 damage from that ice blast on Nunu right now. His ultimate is going to be... It scales so, so much. A plus 176 for 70 ability power. Wow, if he channels that full right now, that's almost 800 damage. That's true. Unfortunately, with uh, with Udyr on the other team and Lee Sin, it's going to be difficult to do late game because of all the interrupts that they have. And the polymorph, I believe, will also interrupt it. Um... So it's, I don't know, it's, it's a little bit rough late game. He, he's going to do well on small engages, but if there is a multiple people on the other team in the engage, chances are somebody will be smart enough to save one stun for Nunu. So. This is true. So Nunu so not we have a fight bottom, 2v1. Uh, we get Polymorph on Vayne. Vayne is trying to run away. Vayne is probably going to go down. She cleanses the exhaust. Lulu also try to get a little bit of extra CC. And wow, Vayne is going to... Oh, Kale is diving. She got the Ignite. That's probably going to do it. She is unfortunately likely dead as well, yes. That is. And we have the blue team coming in to counter. Victor is behind. We have Lee Sin baiting. That was a really good bait. Kicks, uh, kicks. Wow. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> everybody misses everything on Blitzcrank and he runs out. He's very fast. He's going to land a grab. Blitzcrank has balls of steel. He does Literally. manage to die. Lee Sin does not get out because of Mundo. And Mundo might actually be able to pick up somebody here. He's going to go for Udir. Udir with turtle form is tank. Really tanky, but uh, yeah, you can't really kite him around because he's so damn fast. And he does have his alt going. Victor is exhausted. Mundo's going to try for the quadra, but it looks like he's going to fail, unfortunately. No, uh -huh. unfortunately, so terrible. Not a one man team in that case, but even <laughs> though Ranhurt and Record got very, very low in that engagement, Zero Cardinality's ultimate did not pick up a kill on anybody, but still. Karthus just... is getting fancy. He might run into Ranhurt here in the tri bush. Oh, he missed him. He went through too fast. They, they walk right by each other. And Ranhurt is crazy lucky right there. That was one of the luckiest things I've literally ever seen. This um, is true, and he's actually going to walk over a ward. Uh, so Zero's like, oh my god, I missed him by like half a second. Come on. Right now he's like, did he flash Dragon Ball? How did he get there? That is impossible. So, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was pretty crazy timing. Ranhurt got moves like Jagger. Yeah. 
Jagger is a very lucky man. It looks like Ranher, <laughs> again, he's going to have to flash so he won't die anyway. Karthus Wall is very strong. Vayne, stronger than Kale right now, is going to win any exchange. So, unfortunately for Vayne, Kale can heal up. Um, but Kale's heal is pretty weak right now. They are going to buff that, actually, in the next patch. So Kale will be more effective next patch. Yeah, but taking a quick look, Kale already has a Ginsu's Rage Blade. That is going to be stacking attack speed and ability power, only making her E that much more powerful. She has Ionian Boots of Lucidity to give her that extra cooldown buff. So she's actually going to... Vayne is baiting a fight here. Blitzcrank is going to land a pull after he E's Lulu. Uh, Lulu probably not the best person to go for. Probably should have went for Kale. We got a Lulu all. Lulu is over committing here. That's pretty crazy. We got Vayne invisible. Udyr is going to try to come in and finish Vayne off before she can get a kill. Good sun into the wall from Vayne. Udyr is not being focused, however, and wow. Okay, Vayne does not get away. Victor is going to come in and do a ton of damage. It doesn't look like they're going to get Blitzcrank because he's very fast. We have. Wow, we have Mundo doing what Mundo does. Fed Mundo, not fun to deal with. He does not even have any offensive items, but he has a level advantage, which is uh, which is doing a lot of damage and percentage damage from the cleaver. If Blitzcrank lands a grab here, it's going to be very bad for blue team. They will lose bot turret, uh, but he misses. Uh, no, he so missed, I, but I'm, he did want to pick up a kill on Victor by just kind of punching him in the face with that robot arm like he, he should be doing. That was actually kind of funny. He went to pull him, and he accidentally killed him, and I don't think he expected to do that. <laughs> Long range robotic punch. All Blitzcrank fans wish that that would pull the corpse, but unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. Oh, man, that'd be great. Yes, it would. So Udyr is going to farm under tower. Uh, as strong as Mundo is right now, killing turtle form Udyr under tower is probably not going to happen. So he's just going to disengage. Maybe think about getting the dragon. Looks like he's going to pick up blue buff for Karthus first. Um, everybody will be back in the lanes by then. Blue does not have any coverage of dragon, though, with wards. So um, unfortunately, purple team doesn't have any oracles or pink ward either. So... But they don't know that. No, they, they could probably get the that. dragon for free. Um, what you're going to see now is probably just Vayne with the non-stop push until they get bot tower. Uh, Lulu picking up Oracle. <laughs> Wants to take that ward out but can't because Blitzcrank is mean. He's a mean guy. Yeah, he is. Um, he's very fast. They are getting dragon now. It looks like uh, there's not enough people bottom to stop them. So regardless. Lulu gets wow, pulled. he gets the pull through. <laughs> Lulu gets baited by the ward. Um... Ward baiting is an advanced, advanced tactic. <laughs> you don't see that in every single game. That goes around with those poke compositions and team team communication, right? That's exactly right. It looks like Kale is getting, well, he's getting harassed. Dove, uh, that's that was pretty bad. The positioning is not good. He's gonna ult, but he's getting pulled. He's not gonna make it out because Kale's ult is kind of crappy. It doesn't last for very long. It's like half a Trindamir ult, uh, you know, or a quarter of anybody's good ult. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. It's not. You're not gonna get out of a fight where you're getting focused as Kale with your ult because there's no, unless you have flash. I guess you might have had a chance, but honestly, probably would have died under the tower anyway. Wasn't gonna probably get away. Um, the top lane is just the most boring thing in the world. We have way too much sustain. Um, the only chance anyone has to die is if Nunu runs out of mana. Uh, it looks like they they want to think about diving. It didn't really go so well last time. It looks like red uh, red team's gonna counter yank. They are diving. Nunu probably should have stayed in the tower, but instead he runs. He is really fast with Blood Boil. We got a teleport in from Blitzcrank. They're getting very deep. Nunu does not look like he's going to die, and there's four people from Red Team coming top. Uh, Lee Sin Dudge not managed to kill Nunu. He's going to go for the Q at the end. He does not get it. But that was pretty much his only chance to do anything positive there. You can't really overcommit from two turrets for like 30 plus seconds because anybody from anywhere on the map above mid is going to get there. Um, it's going to be really hard to catch Udyr because of bear form. It looks like they're going to dive him. They do have exhaust on him. He is unfortunately going to perish as well. Yeah, he does uh, not look long for this world. And to just point out the fact that Lee Sin has to be very angry that he was not able to pick up a kill on that Nunu. I mean, actually, speaking of picking up a kill, we see that Ponophobia getting extremely close. Picking up a kill onto Baidoku. Iolulu and uh, uh, Kale Ultimate are going to have to be burned in order to tower dive down. And he does finally pick up a kill. But as I was saying, that Lee Sin has to be very, very angry considering right now he has only, I mean, he has about double the farmer that Nunu and he wasn't able to pick up a kill on him. Yep, Nunu is very elusive. The, the problem with trying to gank Nunu, especially under tower, is that unless you have a lot of CC, he's just going to pop Blood Boil and just run while he Ice Balls one of you. So he's faster than you unless you manage to have mobility boots or something absurd like that, which you're not going to have, obviously, on Lee Sin. Um, you really just shouldn't Tower Dive Nunu unless you are sure that you can land a Snare or something that does uh, does a lot more CC than what they actually had. 
Um, and unfortunately, if he gets on the other side of you, your only choice for a CC is to kick him the other direction, which is not obviously going to help you finish the gank. So as soon as they failed that gank, they probably should have backed off. Um, but uh, Silver Lining, Ranhurt did manage to get mid tower during that exchange. So that wasn't really the worst thing that could have ever happened. No, not not at all. There's a bottom tower kill. There's a kill on Badoku on the bottom lane. Well, Lulu's going to get killed. Lulu uh, walking around without ward coverage, trying to place wards down. You can't really do that without CV. You need your team with you to, to even place wards at this point in the game. Mundo is just, oh man. Ranher flashes away. He's going to live. He got the stun on Karthus. He might have died if Karthus didn't get the full stun. Vayne is probably going to try to engage on Kale down here because of how low she is. And... We do have the Vayne ult, Kale ult as well. Vayne's going to chase down. Vayne with the passive is going to catch up very quickly. Um, maybe dive this tower. It looks like Kale should not have turned around there, unfortunately. Maybe might get it. Yep, looks like uh, we get the stun into the wall from Vayne. Udyr is going to chase. Udyr with bear form is also very fast. Um, the Karthus ult is for mid, which where we also have a fight. Uh, it looks like Lee Sin is going to attempt to kill Blitzcrank. Mundo... <laughs> Mundo is going to chase Lee Sin around. He's very fat. He knows he can win a 1v1 fight. Blitzcrank is probably going to come back at some point, try to land a pull kick, pull punch, whatever you want to call it. Um, Lee Sin is trying like everything he can to dodge everything. He's got Mundo and Blitzcrank low. So he avoids dying by getting them low enough that they can't dive. Unfortunately for him, Mundo has the worst, craziest sustain in the game. And Karthus is back. It looks like they'll be able to hold tower, though with Lulu here, although she doesn't have a whole lot of damage. They might just siege the tower. Um, Kale's also on the way. And yeah. of course, Bane just, just now respawning. Sotair's item build must be something that he likes doing a lot, because I saw him have the same exact build on Shivani as a Vampiric Scepter, a Heart of Gold, a Cloth Armor. He's not really finishing any items. He has the Chain Vest and the Giant's Bell. He could get a Sunfire Cape, you know. There's a turret going down in the meantime while I'm talking about this. But still, that Mundo, just, he just doesn't die at this point. He doesn't have to finish items. He doesn't have to you know, do anything right now besides pop that ultimate and just kind of run around in circles. He's healing off of cleavers, he's healing off of just hitting minions, and just really being just all overall a nuisance. And the blue team really doesn't have a response to that. Even the ignites they're throwing down on him, he's just getting away. He's 9, 2, and 7, and he doesn't really... He does. He just doesn't have a lot of items or anything to really show for it, but he's just being Mundo, and that's why people like taking Mundo. 137 farm in his jungle compared to Udyr, 110. We saw him running around, going in against the raids and everything. It looks like he's going to have a pull from here. Blitzcrank. He does manage to pull Lee Sin. Lee Sin can jump back over the wall. Not who he wanted to pull. He was probably looking for Lulu. Lulu's going to get knocked into the wall. Mundo's going to land a cleaver. Unless Lulu had flash, he's pretty much done. Oh, we get a Kale ult, but it's probably not going to matter, honestly, because it only lasts for one second. Uh, <laughs> you would think that uh, you would think it would last longer because Kale is not very good in general, but it does not. So that's why she's getting buffed. Now we're going to see the slow dive and Lee Sin's horrible slow demise. Waste of flash, probably not the best thing you can do. Not going to get away from Karthus. Karthus, however, stands in the tower for way too long for no reason and does eventually die. And that winds um, up giving Lee Sin a little bit of a bonus because Karthus had a killing spree. That is true. Unfortunately, he's still ahead by 9,000 gold, and <laughs> that gold is very much concentrated on three people, and those the people you definitely want the gold concentrated on, which is Vayne, who already has a Bloodthirster Zeal, Karthus, who already has Rabadons and Rod of Ages, which is just an absurd amount of damage at this point in the game, and uh, Mundo, who obviously has the all the health items. Mundo heals based on maximum health, so... That's why you just basically stack health on Mundo, because when he hits the ult, he heals 55%. doesn't matter what his his total health is. So the more health he has, the more he heals up from the ult, which is why Mundo's before stacking magic resistance, before stacking armor, will generally stack health, because it just increases the health you gain from the ult. So mm -hmm. it's got up, the double effect. Yeah. We see up top here, though, it looks like Ranher is going for a very late game lane switch against this Nunu up top. Nunu has gotten the patented 25 minute Rod of Ages that most of the new players seem to get. Mm, totally making up that one, by the way. I don't really see new new players <laughs> getting Rod of Ages, let alone being around the 25 minute mark. But it is still something that's going to be adding 
sustainability to his health co count. He has 2,997 health. He is not going to die anytime soon, no matter how much Ragnarok wants to harass with this blue buff. He's got a heart of gold, Mercury treads. You know, his ultimate's going to be hitting for like a truck if he does somehow manage to pop it. But still, if you go to focus down on a Nunu just to stop his ultimate, he has so much health, it's not going to be like anything. Ranhart will get this tower though because unfortunately as much sustain as Nunu has, that's about all he has. He has health, he has sustain, and he has a movement speed buff, which he actually hasn't been maxing. He only has it at level 3 with level 5 on that consume. So uh, Nunu's pretty much just a sustain bot up top right now, and he's not really going to be doing too, too much. We see Blitzcrank meanwhile has Shirelias, has Glacial Shroud, has everything to move around the map and run this Lee Sin, and everybody there trying to collapse down on him. No avail right now, and the blue team, you know, they have towers down, they have an advantage in the pushing, just looking around the map and seeing where their creeps are and everything, but then you look at the score, it's 28 to 11. We have, uh, we have, an, we have an initiation, Blitzcrack misses the hook, they're going to try to go after Lulu because she's the weakest target, unfortunately, well, Karthus does manage to get in good position, even if he dies here, he's going to be doing damage the entire time, he wants to ult after the KL ult's done, um, unfortunately he doesn't live that long, that he can't live two extra seconds, so... Uh, it looks like we're going to have Udyr going down to Mundo. Um, Lee Sin is not getting away, so he's going to attempt to take down Nunu before he runs, but it's just not going to happen. He does actually manage to move to the back of the fight. Unfortunately, uh, they remember that they have a ton of CC and nobody's getting away from this fight. So um, <laughs> Blitzcrank might have died had he not had his passive. Uh, but he is now running after Kale. Kale, Blitzcrank very fast. Probably shouldn't have stopped, but it doesn't really matter. If they go for Nunu, uh, it looks like they don't know Lulu's there, so it's uh, it's not as bad as it could have been. They could have lost Lulu also, and uh, Vayne, however, is taking bottom, which is unfortunate. Say, it that was a four v five, and it looks like we got to surrender. That was a that was a well played game. Yeah, from it was the a four v five, and the purple team came out ahead with nothing but crowd control in that fight and a Karthus. So. Uh, not the best position and yeah, not the best composition from blue team right here. Kind of fan servicing us, I think, with that Victor and Kale pick, though. So, uh, didn't <laughs> expect too, too much from them. But still, DC Wasabi ha probably had the most boring game of his life in that top lane against <laughs> Nunu. <laughs> no doubt. Nunu is probably, um, Nunu and Morgana are probably the most boring champions to lane against in the game, I would say. Um, they just kind of, they kind of wrecked the the wave and then just walk away and everything you do to him just get healed back so it's kind of boring um uh, well i mean purple team basically just steamrolled them and you see 32 12 the score is pretty much indicative of what happened there wasn't really a close game that kind of got pulled away at the end um the problem is with dr mundo getting fed early he has so much control over all the lanes i actually had on levels the entire time as you can see in the end game screen um, everybody on the purple team is almost everybody 17 except for Blitzcrank at 15 and you can see that Lulu is still level 12 we have Kale at level 14 that's the that's uh, the bottom lane just um, both like way behind um, you really need your your AD carry late game and unfortunately Ponophobia with uh, 2 and 8 at level 14 is just not going to be doing much damage with just a Rage Blade and a BF Sword no unfortunately not and that's just going to be it for the, that game I think we're going to try to sneak one more in here if you're down for it Bad Administrator uh, yep, I'm good to go.